Hey, if you guys are about to see our excerpts taken from the Muay Thai Library session with Tanadet Torpron49. He works with me on a move that's very signature to him called the Long Clinch. He is the best at it. He's incredible. And you can see how complex and yet effective and kind of unbeatable it is in these excerpts. So I hope you enjoy. is a huge part of it. So his head is like connected to my jaw and pushing into my jugular at every second. No matter where I move, no matter where he's pulling me, it's the same contact. Whereas when I move, my head kind of like pops off of him a little bit. It's one of the reasons I get tired. Yes, but you feel that if you pull this out, you're not pinching your shoulders. Uh -huh. He pinches them and pulls it in. Yeah. There, I kind of get the position he does with my do arms up by my ears. Relaxes that shoulder for you, but he doesn't. He pinches. But the it. head drops down to be like straight between the arms. It's like completely level. Look at that. Look how small that entry is. Yeah. yeah. He actually, when you feel it, he does not have his arms perfectly in the same position as each other. One of them is a little bit more lax than the other. It's like not quite as tight against the neck. But then as you try to swim in, you're like, you think you have a space and you try to take advantage of it. He just straightens that arm a little bit harder. It's the same as how you use your shoulder to block someone being able to grip your neck. And that necessarily opens up your other side. But when they try to go to the other side, you just pinch that side closed too. So there's a slight seesaw to, um, the tension in his arms, but it's very, very small. Oh, his head and arm position is just insane. But you have to look at mm. the the overall shape of the straight back down to his hip, and then the bend in his knees. He's talking about trips and turns here. So there, you just kind of feel the opponent's movements because they're trying to follow you to stay upright. And so you feel when their feet kind of come together or you feel when they start to lean in a direction and that's when you whip to turn them down. I was pretty surprised by how much I was moving him because I really wasn't using a lot of power or strength. Um, it's because when I... I'm a little bit more familiar with this one. Um, so I was, I was comfortable getting into it. But when I'm in this position, I do not move as much as he does. So again, it's the... I can be static in the position, but when you need to move in the position too, that's what shows you whether your lock is true or not. If it's a true lock, you can move as much as you want and it stays exactly the same, like an alligator's jaws don't move. Whereas when I try to move with this locked position, tiny changes are occurring in the position around his head and it creates little openings for him to get out. Oh, look at him go. And he pulls in these little bursts that totally makes Way the opponent back, yeah. look like they're just going to fall over. <laughs> like they're utterly controlled by the movement that he's doing. So because we're just working on the same technique over and over again, like how to get into it and how to pull around in it, getting into that position um, is where the nuance comes in. So as we're coming into clinch, me body punching or... Um, controlling his arms or any of those things. Those are the small, what is natural to getting into this position that you can change up. But just getting into it is the part that's hard, is staying in it is the hard part. I'm starting to get my head lower, but see how it's not connected to his jaw or his neck? So I'm not putting as much pressure on him and he can have more strength 
uh, natural strength from me not putting that pressure on his jaw, which is why I want to keep it there all the time. I can feel that I'm rushing. When he moves, there's no meaningless movement ever. Like his, his feet never take extra steps. I'm asking what do you do first when you get into the position? Do you turn first or do you knee first? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> which means either one, depending on what position you're in when you get there. If Lock the knee is opening, wrist, take it. If the knee isn't open yet, you turn first. But you wrist. go between the two all the time. Yeah. You keep moving and kneeing so that the ref yeah. won't break you. Lock. See, oh, lock. look at his pull. When he does Do you see it, that little when you do it, position he took and he was out. pulling back with his legs? Mm. He's like, if you don't keep your head close, the opponent can get mm. under and push mm. it out of the way. But if I keep my head tucked I'll into his jaw, pull that tight, so. there's nothing he can do. Hey. So what you just saw are excerpts taken out of a full hour entry into the Muay Thai library with Tonadet Tor Pro Torpron 49, and in the entire session he's working on the long clinch. So you get to see all of the intricacies, you get to really see all the different angles he uses and the pressure points that he puts in, and um, it's very complicated and hard for me to figure out, so you get to see lots of uh, correction and instruction as well. Um, if you are not yet a patron, you can click on the link in the description below and easily become one, and there's more than 167 hours of long-form instruction like this. Lots to learn.